OB38 or Open Beta 38 has just been announced by the Paladins developers High Res Entertainment and we get a glance of what's coming in the next week or so. It's, it's usually two weeks from the last patch so it should be very soon from Charlin being released last week. Whilst it wasn't what they talked about first, I think the biggest thing is the new balance changes that they've added, basically balancing some of the characters. Barak and Victor have got a nerf, whilst Grok and Grover have got a buff. So first up we've got Barak. They've nerfed his health from 3000 to 2900. They've reduced his healing station card from doing 60, 120, 180 and 240 at each level to 45, 90, 135 and 180 at each level. They've also nerfed rocket boots giving an extra 2 seconds onto the cooldown and also bonus damage on turrets has been reduced from 30%, basically 15% on each turret while space they're targeting someone to 20% from both of them, so 10% each turret. What they said was that they wanted to take a bit off the top of everything about Barrack because Barrack at the moment is overperforming in matches. However, personally, I feel that once a player's got Bulldozer and they're taking out the turrets, the Barrack isn't that strong. I think the healing station did need a nerf because you could take on other tanks head to head really easily just having that healing, and you were trying to decide whether to take out the turret or take out the enemy and often, you, whilst you're taking out the turret, you'd be getting killed by the barrack. Um, the health nerf is only a little, it's only 100 health, it, it isn't huge, I mean it's gonna make him a bit more squishy, but in the grand scheme of things it's not massive. I don't know whether they, they really needed the rocket boots, I know that his rocket boots do give him quite a bit of a, an escape, and there's a card that gives you a, a shield as well, uh, that's quite good, but whether that added to everything else is needed, I'm not sure. And also the bonus damage is another one that's it's a 10% reduction from the extra damage. That's quite a lot. That's, that's, that's a pretty big reduction. And even though Barrack does a lot of damage at the moment, he's also squishy without his turrets. And I think that perhaps this is punishing him a little too much. I mean, he's a good tank, yes, but the other tanks are also good in their own ways. Personally, I think they may have gone a bit too far with this Barrack nerf, maybe making him from the king of tanks at the moment to not so much, but obviously still one of the best picks, and maybe in competitive now we won't see Barrack being picked first off all of the time. As always though, we will need to see on live how it plays out, and what the stats are afterwards, and the wins and losses, and then we'll know whether or not it was a good nerf or not, and maybe I'll be using my words. The next one is Victor and the damage fall off now starts at 90 feet instead of the 135 feet that it has at the moment and they've also increased the recoil slightly. They didn't specifically say what the recoil was, it'd be nice to know the amounts and sort of the, the kickback and the, the little numbers that go on with that but we, did, we didn't get any of that, we just got a general recoil increase. So first off the damage fall off, it's probably quite needed because at the moment you can snipe with Victor and you can out snipe Knessa and Charlin in some situations where you're moving left and right. What they've said is they want the character to be a mid-range character which is true for the moment in the most part that's how I play him. I'm, I'm always up close throwing my grenades, timing those grenades to go off into the point, often trying to make sure that I'm in my damage range but you'll have to be getting closer now than you did before but 90 feet is still quite a fair distance. On the recoil increase, uh, we'll just have to see how that works out with the cards because there are, there are a lot of cards that reduce the recoil. Personally I didn't use the recoil reduction cards in my newer builds because with most games that are shooting games, recoil is something that you can control yourself and is about basically having the, the right pull down and everything so the best players probably won't be affected by this but what it will likely do is make it so that in lower casual matches that it doesn't look like the victor is always aimbotting because sometimes it is quite hard to tell whether a victor is aimbotting or not because the recoil is literally zero so it's almost like they've got a beam following you. Maybe that'll sort of shore up some of the concerns there and some of the Nubia players that are just picking victor because he's easy to use will now um, have to adapt and actually put some skill into using the character. Personally I don't think victor is really overpowered in this meta and, and even though he does normally do the raw, the raw damage higher, it's often harder to mobilize him, He's, his actual run isn't as good as other people's rolls and um, other things like that, so it'll be interesting to see where he stands now. It's not a massive um, nerf I don't think, and I think the recall is something that, as I said, pros will compensate for and probably don't use those sort of cards anyway at the moment. I think a lot of people will be happy to hear there's a Grover buff, but whether it's enough 
um, I'm not sure. Basically, they made it so that the axes at the minimum damage go from 300 base to 350. It's not a huge increase, but everything is nice. And it's always been a bit of a weird situation with Grover because he's a character that needs to be close to your allies to heal them because his Q, his main heal, um, heals in like a, an AoE bloom and a circle around him. And also he passively heals people that are near him. And his axes do damage, the, the more damage as they further get away from Grover, so the more they swing, the more damage they'll do. His right click doesn't have that, it just has a, a base 300 damage. I don't know whether that'll be increased as well. At the moment this will mean that he's slightly more effective in close quarters. And I know everyone was quite angry last patch when his HP was nerfed, because at the moment he's seen as quite a weak character. But this extra damage will make him slightly more viable, and it's nice. Um, We'll just have to see on this one anyway and how it how much it actually adds to him. Grox also received a slight buff with the totem health going from 400 to 900 and that's quite a big deal for quite a lot of characters seeing as like Cassie could one shot his totem and a lot of other characters that had over 400 damage direct could destroy his totem in one hit. Now it means that at the very least it'll take two hits to get rid of it um, but it just means that from Splash and things like that, it'll have a bit more survivability. I don't think it's a massive buff because if you're a good player, you're always going to be looking for that totem and trying to take it out. But because that'll mean an extra shot you're using to get rid of that totem that you would have normally been hitting the Grok with. And Grok's quite good at escaping and coming back into fights and disengaging with his um, escape where he makes himself go into a shadow form. I think it's a nice buff, it's needed, um, but it's not massively changing the way you're going to be playing uh, Grok and it's not a massive increase either, it's just a nice little touch. So those are all the balanced passes at the moment. I know a lot of people have been calling for a Sharlin nerf, um, but Dry Bear at the end also said in the questions that Sharlin wasn't a big performer in the game. Actually, from my experience, Sharlin can get shut down so easily by flankers, and the problem with Sharlin is is that in uh, lower bracket games, what will happen is the Shaolin will be able to move around the map and won't be countered by the flankers or won't be um, pinned down all the time. Being able to get into those spots and get the cues off and do all the damage without being harassed, that makes him seem overpowered. But the thing is, it's high risk, high reward, so when you're still, you're so easy to kill. Um, and loads of characters counter him as well, like the, the return on Androxus basically throws his Q back at him. Eevee, the flanker, can go into her ice block and just dodge all of the damage. And even normal characters can move left to right and dodge a lot of the Q shots because there's a time uh, delay between it and you can't control it, so you can't try and aim uh, very well like each shot. And Stolzy, one of the competitive players in Paladin, showed basically this sidestepping off and how easy it was. So, personally I don't think Charlin's overpowered and probably doesn't need a nerf and may need looking at to make make him maybe more viable, but he's in sort of the same spot as Knessa. It's hard for him to get into the action. The next big thing they showed off was the rework of Serpent Beach. They've actually taken away uh, a few of the places. When you're pushing, attacking on the left-hand side, if you pass, pass through the first hut, there's there was normally a little tunnel to go through, but that seems to be missing now. Um, but in general, it's nighttime now, which is different to all the other sort of serpent maps and the jungle maps that they've got going on. And basically they've placed loads of snakes everywhere and torches and fires to make it look um, quite alive. And personally, I think this is excellent. It looks fantastic and I'm definitely looking forward to this rework. And when you play the new um, Timber Mill uh, map, you realise how different the game looks when you're playing that map compared to the older maps because the lighting is a lot better and yeah, it just generally looks more epic. And the whole game, and that basically drags the whole game to looking better. Another thing that they've done with this map that is so frustrating normally is they've got rid of that rail, that banister, that you normally come and hit in your when you're mounted on your horse when you come out of the spawn room. Um, once you have mounted two, or mounted one, you can actually jump across the side and jump over, um, but now they've got rid of it, so you don't need to worry about um, trying to do any trick jumps to get over the banister. Um, so that's a nice addition. A bit less frustration to be honest. They did also mention that a new map was coming soon, TM, not in OB38 but in the future and that it was a siege map and they said that they've also had several other maps in the works too but no ETA on any of those. Something else worth talking about is the new uh, Rooker skins. 
there's just the normal coloration skins and and now they split it up correctly into the parts and the head isn't a head it's the whole gobbo the whole goblin is the head parts but basically you can color all of the bits of it personally i'm not massively excited about these as i'm not about all the other colorations in the game but it's just a nice little touch um, but there is a pretty epic skin that's coming out. It's called the Star Slayer. The whole Shabazz, uh, the whole of um, Ruckus has changed. Even the Goblin looks completely different. And it's, it lo almost looks like a Transformer now that you have him in game. It's pretty cool. And I think it'll be interesting. And they've said that the animations are all pretty epic as well. Like when you do the jump forward, it looks like you're going to hyperspace. There's like dots and uh, lines that go onto the screen, which does sound rather epic. It'd be interesting to see if the animations on the, the weapon are different as well and the um, projectiles are a bit different, but we'll, we'll just have to see. Dry Bear, the lead director, also said that about melee weapons. He says that he doesn't want a hero that is just melee like Makara is, which might be disappointing to a lot of people, but that there might be heroes in the works that have a tandem melee and ranged ability, so maybe a pistol and a sword that they can switch between at will, so that sounds quite interesting, um, and personally I would like to see something melee orientated pushed out, but we'll just have to wait for that. And they said that they were looking at base melee, basically a melee punch or a hit or a knife um, that you can use on like a quick knife or something like that. Just in most of the shooter games at the moment, they have that ability, but we don't. So. Obviously they're considering it and maybe we can make our voice heard as to whether or not we want it. Personally I think it'd be nice, as long as it's a very low damage, it'd just be something extra to add on. It's, it does get quite frustrating when you're reloading and you can't knife um, compared to other modern games that you play. It just doesn't feel quite right I suppose. They also teased by saying that there was a new frontliner in the works but that it wasn't a female frontliner not, and not that it's a male one either because they said that it was, um, they didn't, they wouldn't specify exactly, but maybe what they were suggesting is that it's a monster or a robot sort of character, but we'll just have to see on that one. Maybe it's just a creature. Um, but they were teasing that also the abilities will be different, it's about putting shields on yourself and other people. Um, so that could be quite interesting, and that's actually one of the ideas that, there was a, the female frontliner idea with shields that she put on other people and used the shields to fire at other people. On my hero competition, um, one of the winners actually said that so maybe you'll be something like that that'd be quite interesting and then that person could be like see I told you so but yeah those are the biggest parts of what they've announced open beta 38 it'll be interesting to see the balance changes in play and generally I think they're in the right direction what does everyone else think do you like the balancing changes what do you think about the new skins what do you think about melee heroes coming in and a base melee um, I know that I say melee across the world those people say different things and maybe in the Midlands in the UK it's a bit different, so oopsie daisy. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you thought it was rubbish, hit the dislike button. And if you want to see more of my content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you all very much for watching. Until next time, Joshino.